Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. And uh, today we're gonna to be having a bit of a uh, discussion about the discovery by Hardware Unboxed here on YouTube that the new Windows 11 update 24H2 is gonna result in some pretty significant performance increases for Ryzen CPUs. Now, it's interesting for a number of reasons which I'm going to uh, be discussing in this video, but the short story is that Windows 11 update 24H2, which according to Windows Central is gonna be released in September or October, so pretty soon within, within the next few weeks perhaps. And uh, it results in up to 11% performance increases with Ryzen CPUs, specifically the Ryzen 9000 series, but it goes all the way back to Ryzen 5000 at the very least, I think. So that's a very, very, very big deal because that kind of performance increase is, well, we've seen smaller increases between generations of CPUs in the past, not least of all Ryzen 9000. So AMD has had a pretty rough ride with Ryzen 9000. Um, I think it's just not performed as well as we'd hoped and not as well as we have gotten used to with AMD. So whether you're going from Ryzen 1000 to 2000, you know, Zen to Zen Plus, or Zen Plus to Zen 2 with the 2000 to 3000 series where we got 16 core CPUs and then 5000 series, Zen, um, Zen 2 to Zen 3, and even Zen 3 to Zen 4, the Ryzen 7000 series was worth an upgrade as well, albeit you had the extra cost of DDR5 memory and motherboards in there as well. But the problem I have with this update, um, it actually goes into several problems, I think. Number one is this, none of us have heard about this until now, right? The blog post was announced last week. No one has tested it until uh, thoroughly until Hardware Unbox did with their video. And uh, as Hardware Unbox said that, you know, no one else has really had time to test this. So, and I, the, the other problem I have with it is that we were told about this at the AMD Tech Day. Uh, that we all went to recently. So I think Hardware and Box were there and Gamer Next was there, were, were there. I was there as well with a, a few UK colleagues. And this just wasn't mentioned at all. But if you're talking about a free update to Windows that everybody can download and install for free, and it's gonna result in an 11% performance or increase for at least the Ryzen 9000 series, well, I think the game, um, Hubber and Box saw that difference with the Ryzen 7 9700X. That's a pretty big deal. And I'm, as I mentioned, I'm annoyed with uh, just the lack of information on this for a few reasons. Number one, this is what AMD is good at. You know, it's good at communicating. It's good at, um, you know, giving inside details and you know behind the scenes stories on all its products i interviewed um one of its uh, top bods jim anderson a while ago about the history of and the foundation of threadripper cpus and that was a great interview but the problem here is that we've just literally heard nothing about it which is why reviewers like harbor and box and myself and everybody else are scrabbling to make sense of it and see what it actually impacts because um, no one has really tested um, content creation performance yet. Uh, Hubber and Boxed only really focused on games. So I'm kind of annoyed with AMD from a number of angles. Number one, why hasn't it shouted from the rooftops with this thing? Because it's a great story. It's been, clearly been working hard with Microsoft on this improved br uh, branch prediction. Uh, these optimizations for branch prediction in uh, in Windows, which which are going to be released with the 24H2 update, um, but also from my point of view, I, I don't like reviewing a product which is which kind of feels unfinished, which makes me feel like Zen 5 kind of was, even though this is more of a general update for Ryzen CPUs. The fact that it's come barely two weeks after the launch of the last Ryzen 9000 series CPUs, why you know. It, it, the update was available, I believe, while we were doing all the testing. So why couldn't we have, you know, been said, oh, hey, you know, we really want you to test with the 24H2 update with your reviews because it provides a decent increase in performance. Um, they didn't do that. You know, that's why everybody is scrambling now and just kind of making, trying to make sense of this. Um, but it's kind of annoying because it means that it would have made Intel look better, uh, made AMD look better against Intel. So um, why would they not want to do that? So... It all seems just a little bit weird uh, coming off the back of a pretty disappointing launch and the delay uh, thrown into that as well because uh, Ryzen 9000 didn't launch when it was meant to have launched. So it kind of mucked up our schedules and then we had weird issues going on where I initially tested, 
a whole bunch of Ryzen 7000 series CPUs prior to this launch. Um, and then all of a sudden those results seemed to be a lot slower further down the line and I had to retest everything. I'm assuming that was something to do with um, the Windows 11 bug or whether, yeah, I, I literally have no idea. I, I haven't had time to, uh, well, I, I tried to investigate that at the time, but I just didn't have, couldn't seem to get to the bottom of it. And exactly as Hardware and Box was saying, they were literally tearing out hardware and putting new stuff in, not getting much sleep and not eating, um, trying to figure out what the problem was. But in the end, I just had to retest and go with slower numbers for the launch. So, um, but yeah, it's a very, very, very weird situation. But having thought about it for 24 hours, I think there's possibly one explanation about A, why we weren't told to test with 24H2 to start with when at the Ryzen 9000 series launch, B, why we haven't heard much about it, um, and also why AMD just hasn't been that forthcoming about uh, about what about using this you know we weren't told to use it in our reviews they didn't mention it at the amd tech day and they haven't mentioned it in other than a fairly light-hearted blog that was mainly going into the the problems around the benchmark numbers for ryzen 9000 this should be you know scream from the rooftops hey you know we work really hard with microsoft and you can download this free update soon that's going to give you a massive performance increase there is a problem with amd doing that which is that owners of the Ryzen 5000 series and 7000 series and potential upgraders to the Socket AM5 platform are now seeing that their Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and Ryzen 7000 series CPUs that they either own or with Ryzen 7000 series potentially looking at potential upgrades there instead of the Ryzen 9000 series are saying, well, hey, I can just hold on to my Ryzen 5000 series CPU a little bit longer or I'm actually going to go for the 7000 series instead of the 9000 series because it's cheaper because this update is going to massively improve performance of those CPUs. And I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, if you're a Ryzen 5000 series uh, owner, 5800X 3D or 5600X or whatever you've got, and I'm telling you that you're going to see a 10% you know, performance increase in, in games soon, is that going to make you want to upgrade to Ryzen 9000? Hell no. Um, is it going to make you want to upgrade to Ryzen 7000? Well, potentially yes, because you're going to see an, e a, an even bigger performance increase with Ryzen 7000, um, probably than you are on Ryzen 5000. So, and the Ryzen 7000 series is a lot cheaper than Ryzen 9000. So, that's possibly the reason why AMD didn't mention this at the AMD Tech Day um, a few uh, well, last month or whenever it was for the Ryzen 9000 series launch when we were going through all the technical stuff. And it's also a reason why it hasn't been shouting this from the rooftops. And it's also the reason why AMD didn't tell us to use the 25H2, uh, 24H2 update sorry, in um, the testing for Ryzen 9000. So that's my explanation anyway, I think, for why we haven't heard about this and why we're all kind of scrambling to get those benchmarks and uh, those benchmark numbers out there. I'm hopefully going to be doing some more testing, especially with content creation, because unlike Hardware Unboxed, I do kind of 50% content creation, 50% gaming performance in my games, so uh, in my benchmarks rather. So um, I'm kind of interested from that as well. And it, it isn't just gaming performance where we will see performance increases, because Branch Prediction has um, uh, the potential to impact performance in lots of different areas. And AMD, while we're... <laughs> Maybe not the best advert for believing AMD's numbers, given what we've seen over the last couple of weeks, but it is touting a 6% performance increase in the um, UL benchmarks, Procyon uh, Office benchmark suite. So what it means for the likes of Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, all those kind of things is uh, uh, we have yet to see. Um, didn't seem to increase lightly threaded performance or single core performance in Cinebench though. So, but that's kind of not maybe what you'd expect from this kind of uh, performance improvement. So it's, it's an interesting um, quandary for sure, because I think AMD is kind of, um, it, it's almost very similar in a way to its 3D Vcache CPUs that, you know, they're brilliant, but they make selling future generations of the standard models pretty hard, as we've seen with the Ryzen 9000 series, that they're, they're just not faster on average than the previous generation of 3D Vcache CPUs. So that's maybe kind of a similar mindset here that it just didn't want to shout this from the rooftops because it would potentially hurt sales even more of the Ryzen 9000 series because people would, would be looking at the Ryzen 7000 series instead, given that it's going to have a decent performance uplift and 
if people are maybe a little bit more strapped for cash, they're just going to hold on to their Ryzen 5000 series CPUs even longer because they're going to see a, uh, you know, a fairly hefty perf uh, performance increase. So it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting one, but the more interesting thing is going to be seeing what, uh, what impact this has on other CPUs. Um, I'd love to see more CPUs in the 7000 series tested. I'm hopefully going to test the, uh, the Ryzen 9 9000 series CPUs, so the 9950X and the 9900X soon in uh, in basically all my usual benchmarks and uh, do a video on that. So don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe button and um, turn on not notifications so you're notified when that video lands. And um, yeah, obviously Ryzen 5000 series as well, which is obviously from AMD's point of view, uh, it's, it's interesting for owners of those CPUs, but it's not going to be great for Ryzen 9000 series sales, which are already pretty shocking apparently according to other people so yeah that was just it for today for my video just my two cents on this discovery by hardware unboxed and well done to those guys for getting the testing i think they all deserve a holiday over there um as do most of us that have that have done uh, the testing for ryzen 9000 because it's kind of been a bit a bit all over the place that something should have been very very simple ended up being a, uh, a pretty uh, a big mess of benchmarking. So um, yeah, that's it for my thoughts today. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Um, do you own a Ryzen 5000 series CPU? And is this going to make you hang on to your CPU and system a little bit longer? Were you considering upgrading and you're now going to hang on to that system? And what about if you are a Ryzen 7000 owner? Are you looking forward to this this potential big increase in performance when it when it lands. And um, yeah, just very interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So don't forget to comment and don't forget to like this video as well if you like this discussion and wanna see more of it. So, and uh, that's it for me today. So we'll be back soon with lots more videos. And uh, again, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll be back very, very soon. See ya.